I want you to look at your neighbor politely and say, neighbor, neighbor. can these, these bones oh. live? Let's party. The fact that we're open bones in the open valley is confirmation that there is devastation. These bones were dry. They were dead. There was no life in them. And what you must understand, people of God, last year was a very rough year for many of you. And a truth be told, it was the enemy that tried to take you out. You've been through so much in your life in the year of 2013. Every time you turn around, every time one door would open, then the enemy will come in and attack you and attack you and attack you. And so now what I have discovered is that there are so many people in the church. There are so many people in the church, but their lives are just like open, dead, and dry bones. And so now in this textual verse, it was unlawful to the Jewish custom for these bones to be exposed and open. And so now that is how many believers operate. Their lives are dry and open and exposed to the work of the enemy. I'm gonna give it to you just the way God gave it to me. I will get you this. It says, so now open, exposed, and dry. And there was no covering because there is no complete sanctification of holiness. And so what the Holy Ghost revealed to me in this text is that the Lord is allowing Ezekiel to have this vision because the Lord is dealing with the devastation and backsliding of the Israelites. And so in turn, God raises up Ezekiel, the prophet, and deals with Ezekiel in a very unique and strange way concerning his people. Can I get an uh, apostle to read verse 3? Because I'm going to do a teaching. Read verse 3 in Ezekiel chapter 37, Apostle Beverly. Verse 3 reads, He asked me, son of man, mm -hmm. can these bones sleep? He, he was. Say that again, Apostle. He asked me, son mm -hmm. of man, son of man, can these bones sleep? Stop. I feel like teaching is one thing. So now, the revelation of verse 3 is the Lord asks Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? I feel the teaching anointing. And then what you must understand, write this down. Can live means a Hebrew word called kara, which means to revive. Answer is amar, which means avouch, which means to confirm or affirm. And so now the Lord means the controller. And Noah's is Yada, which means prognosticator, which means to predict. And so what is the revelation and illumination of this verse? The theological question is, what is the Lord and who is the controller trying to convey or say to Ezekiel while Ezekiel is in this vision? But what you must understand, Ezekiel is in this vision because of the devastation of Israel. I feel the teaching anointing. And the Holy Ghost Apostle Beverly revealed to me, and as I wrote this sermon, I just gave it the Lord, I wrote exactly what the Lord told me to say. The Holy Ghost revealed to me that God, watch this, God was saying to Ezekiel, do you believe I can revive these bones? Y'all, I might just teach today, is that alright? Do you believe I can revive the strength, the essence, or the central meaning of these bones? Watch this. Uh, read verse 11. Verse 11 reads, mm -hmm. Then he said to me, Son of man, uh -huh. these bones are the whole house of Israel. So, so now we know what the bones are symbolic of. So we see how God is dealing with Ezekiel in this vision, Apostle. Keep going. They mm -hmm. say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. Ah, uh, oh Lord have mercy. We are cut off. Uh-huh. That's all we have. The text says that these bones are the whole house of 
Israel. And through their rebellion, watch this, because I got cases. I'm not going to move today, I'm going to teach this. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done already. Through their rebellion, they have become very dry. So the question is, why did they become dry? They became dry because of their sin. They became dry because of their rebellion. So that, read verse 11 again, because y'all got to catch this. Uh huh. Son of man. Uh huh. Son of man. Uh huh. Old house of Israel. I'll stop right there. So, as we see in the Hebrew language, the word bones in the Hebrew language are they are strength. So, 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 so it's significant that there was no strength in the Israelites. And the reason why there was no strength in the Israelites because they got outside of the will of God and they are now paganistic worship and idols in their lives. I'm not going to hold the name y'all. Just watch. I'm teaching. I'm going to teach you on it. So what the Lord is asking, watch this. So what the Lord is asking Ezekiel, do you believe I can revive Israel and get Israel back into right relationship and fellowship with me. And that's the problem with a lot of people in the church. A lot of people in the church that are in the house of God, come to the church, paying their tithes, but they, have, they need revival. They need to be revived. Their bones are dry and there's a billion in their lives. Y'all not going to make me preach. I'm going to teach. Y'all not going to make me preach. Evangelists don't go there because I'm not going to preach. My God says to me. This is what right is there. This is what Ezekiel said to the Lord in this vision. Because you got to catch this. He said, he, see, see the, Lord, the Lord said something very significant to Ezekiel in this vision. Watch this. He said, and I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Y'all know I'm about to tear this up. Read verse 3 again so I can work this. Read verse 3, Apostle Mary. My God is your Lord and Lord my God. He asked me, mm -hmm. Son of man, what can these bones be? So, Jehovah, who is the controller, maker of heaven and universe, The one who sits high and looks low yeah. has manifested himself to Ezekiel in this vision. So now Ezekiel is caught up in the spirit realm in a vision, having spiritual dialogue with Jehovah in a vision. And so now I asked God when I got to the answer part of verse 3, I said, God, what does it mean? And God spoke to me, he says this, answer, answer is a Hebrew word, it's amar, and another word is avouch, which means, it means to affirm, confirm, and lower in the Hebrew language is the controller, and knowest is a word called prognosticator, or to predict. So what do you mean by all that? This is all that you ask. Read verse 3 one more time, and we're going to execute this and get some clarity. He asked me. He asked me. Son of man. Son of man. Can these bones Can these bones what? Can, I, can the Christian get delivered? Say, can these what? Can I say So now, 
But Ezekiel, watch this, take notes y'all, because I promise you I'm not going to preach, so I'm just not going to happen. What Ezekiel, and I'm almost done, keep be my clock. I got you, Bishop. So what Ezekiel said to the Lord in response to the question is this, Lord, I avouch. Lord, I confirm. Lord, I affirm. Lord, you're the controller. Watch this. Because you are Lord. And the Lord is the prognosticator, and you and the God predicts all things. Come on, Bishop. Right and Ezekiel on. could have not believed the bones could live. My God. And he could have had no faith. But Ezekiel, having confirmation from the Holy Spirit, <laughs> caused him to confirm what God had already shown him in the spirit realm. So God told us, promise not to my father get out, to let you know that your life struggles and every storm you survive, all the hell that you've been through, what the devil tried to do with you last year, look at your neighbor and say, all oh, things have passed away, sugar baby. All things, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Scream at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is the year of favor in my life. Lord have mercy. Some of y'all could have been dead and sleeping in your grave. And the reality 
for all of us. Some of y'all, y'all ain't hardly having no money. People been coming against you, putting their mouth on you. But you know what? All the warfare is confirmation that is just right around the corner. If you believe it's right around the corner, you better stop praising God right now. If you never seen it before, if you believe what God got for you. Come on, Love you. Come on, Bishop. That's the key. I want to get 
I will work on that loving part. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna say this number close. Place off, son. I'm done preaching. Come on, I'm gonna help you out. Come on. This is worth millions of dollars. I'm about, yeah, I'm about to tell you how to get blessed. All it takes to get all that God has for you is you have to love God. Come on, Bishop. Yes. Come on, Bishop. You're helping him. When you love God, Come on. there is no good thing with hope. that withheld from you. Come on, woman of God. Yes. Yes. No good thing. That he will withhold from you. Why? Because you love him. Because you love the Lord. When you love the Lord. When you love the Lord. That's what Jesus says about Haggai. You gotta love him, Bishop. Bible says that in Haggai, they were supposed to build, build a temple that was destroyed when Solomon had it built. Solomon's temple was off the chain. It was just awesome. And this. And this part of the Israelites, they got discouraged because they didn't think that their temple would look as good as theirs. But God says, Solomon's temple may have been all that. But God said, I'm going to manifest my glory in your temple more than I did when it was in Solomon's temple. And I have a And I come to let you know all the people, all the church folk that hurt y'all. God says, I'm about to take you one little bit of glory to God. And God says, I'm about to move it in you like you've never seen it before. Say it, Lord. God, God says, as I want to prophetic, God says, I'm about to show you who I am this year, 2014, like you have never seen me before. God says, you're about to see my glory like you've never had before. God says, this is going to be a year that I'm going to take you from glory to glory to glory. Thank you. 